In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate muscle energy for the pelvis, specifically for superior shears and inferior shears. So we're going to start with our patient in a supine position. So go ahead and lie down. And great. And can you move down a little bit closer to the edge of the table? Great. So we're going to want our patient with their feet close to the edge of the table, if not off the edge of the table. And we're going to start with a superior shear on the right. So now if we had a superior shear on the right, we know that our landmarks are an ASIS that is superior and a PSIS that is superior. And we're going to want to induce an inferior shearing force to get to the restricted barrier. So how are we going to accomplish that? We're going to make contact at the uh, distal tibia and fibula on that right side. We're going to abduct the hip and we're going to internally rotate the hip. That's going to induce a closed pack position between the femoral head and the acetabulum, which is going to allow us to transmit forces from the leg to the innominant. Now, from here, we can add an inferior shearing force. If we wanted to add some additional stability, we could take our thigh and contact the contralateral foot to provide stability in the opposite side. Now, again, with our abduction and internal rotation, we can traction inferiorly until we meet the restricted barrier. Once we meet the restricted barrier, we're gonna have our patient uh, use respiratory assist principles to apply forces against our traction. So go ahead and take some big breaths in and out. And as our patient breathes in, we're gonna resist any motion. And as they breathe out, we're going to follow any relaxation that occurs. Go ahead and out. Now with respiratory assist, we can use uh, now five to seven complete cycles. Okay, go ahead, two more times. Go ahead and one more breath in. And breathe out. So some references also include an articulatory force at the end of those cycles using a cough. So that could be used at the end of the final exhalation. So go ahead and take a breath in and all the way out. And when you breathe all the way out, cough for me. So that cough is going to induce a quick articulation at the SI joint as the sacrum moves anteriorly and posteriorly, which is going to allow this innominate to move inferiorly a little bit more. And then we would return our patient back to neutral and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. If instead we were treating an inferior shear, so where our landmarks are an ASIS that is inferior and a PSIS that's inferior, we're going to want to induce motion to get our innominate into a superior position. So how can we accomplish that? We're going to reverse our contacts so that we can induce the opposite motions into the leg that we're trying to move. So in this instance, we're going to make contact with our thigh on the right foot and we're going to abduct, internally rotate slightly to enter that close pack position so we can transmit forces from the leg to the pelvis. And then we're going to press superiorly to bring that innominate towards its restricted barrier. Then in the contralateral side, we're going to abduct, internally rotate, and then traction inferiorly. Now this is going to pull the left side and the left innominate inferiorly, but because we place the right leg into a superior barrier, as we induce additional traction on the left side, we can focus on inducing a greater barrier on the right side. So we traction until we feel a solid restricted barrier on the right side. Then we're going to have our patient breathe in and out and in and out. And again, as they breathe in, we're going to resist. And as they breathe out, we're going to follow any change in motion. And again, we're going to continue this for a total of five to seven times. Okay. And then one more breath in and out. And out. Great. And then we can return our patient back to neutral position and reassess for somatic dysfunction.